Hi, this is Mark Kemper with EMS, and in this video, we're going to use three scanners at one time. So what do I mean by using multiple scanners at once? I'm certainly not going to be able to hold three scanners in my hand and be able to scan, so we're actually going to use multiple scanners and multiple people, and we're going to scan a large object because the idea here is if we could use three scanners, it should be quite a bit faster than just using one scanner. And for this, we're going to uh, scan this Cadillac Escalate ESV. So it's a very large vehicle, and we're going to show you just how fast in real time we can 3D scan this with three scanners. Now, the scanners we're going to use today are the Creaform HandyScan Black Elite, the Creaform HandyScan 700, and the Creaform GoScan Spark 3D Scanner. Now, if you want a detailed demo of each one or any of these scanners, uh, in the description below you'll see links to videos we've me made that go into a ton of detail on accuracy and resolution and everything you want to know, applications, everything about those scanners, and I would encourage you to go watch those if you want to learn more. But we will do just a brief overview of how this technology works so you understand what we're going to be doing here in this demo. Now, the two handy scan scanners require targets, uh, positioning targets, at all times when they're scanning. Because basically, this is a completely handheld device. You plug in a USB cable, you plug that into your laptop, and you go and scan. But the software needs to know where you are in space, um, so as it captures the scan data, it knows where it belongs. So those targets you put on the vehicle about every four inches or so, um, uh, you know, just random all over the vehicle, and then the scanner will see those targets, and it's kind of like GPS. Those targets are like the satellites in the sky, and the scanner is like the receiver. And as long as it can see at least three of them, it can position itself. So as it's moving along, it's typically going to see more than that, but it can continuously position itself by the randomness of the targets. Now, at the same time, the two handy scans emit a crosshatch laser uh, pattern, and that distorts as it hits the shape of the vehicle, and those same sensors are looking at that distortion, and through a process called triangulation, is figuring out the 3D shape. Um, I equate it to kind of digital spray painting. You just kind of move back and forth and make sure you, you, know, you cover the whole area you want to scan. Now, the GoScan Spark is a little different. It will use targets, and in a case like this vehicle, we would want to use targets, but it also uses geometry. So it will sample the scan data, and as it's doing that, it's going to look at the 3D shape of that data and try to align each sample scan using geometry. Now, that's great on something that has a lot of shape and features to it, but this vehicle down the sides, in many areas, it's kind of smooth. So it might have a hard time actually aligning those based on geometry just because some areas are so smooth. So we would probably use targets in this case with the GoScan anyways. But the nice thing about it is, it, for many things, you don't need targets, but targets always offer the best accuracy with any scanner. And if we want to hold a tight accuracy, especially on something this large, it's probably good to have targets anyways. But we're going to show you putting on the targets and then doing the scanning in real time, just so you can see how fast we can scan something like this large vehicle. Okay, so now we're ready to put the targets on the vehicle, and we're going to start by using magnetic targets. The advantage of magnetic targets is they go on easy, they come off easy, and you can reuse them over and over. So we're going to randomly place them every four to six inches on the vehicle, everywhere that we have a magnetic surface. Now, for time purposes, we've obviously sped this up, but it doesn't take that long to go ahead and target it up. And we're only going to really target just beyond halfway of the vehicle because it is symmetrical and you'll see later um, how we can take advantage of that. So again, randomly, we just move around, add the targets, in this case, everywhere that we have uh, magnetic surfaces, placing them about every four to six inches. Now, for all the areas that are not magnetic, we're going to use just the standard sticky targets. And these come in different adhesives, uh, light, regular, and, and uh, heavy, depending on the type of surface uh, you are applying these to. 
So on a vehicle like this with nice smooth paint, we use the light adhesive. Uh, they go on easy, they come off very easy. For something that might be more dirty or oily, you might wanna use the strong adhesive. Um, so it just depends. But you basically, again, just randomly put them on. We're gonna put them on all the areas that the uh, magnetic targets uh, won't stick to. And then uh, we will then uh, peel them off and they easily come off. You can use your fingernail or there's a little, uh, some people use like a little plastic scraper. On something like this, you probably just wanna use your fingernail and pluck them back off. Uh, but again, we're just gonna put them everywhere we need them, going a little bit beyond the center line of the vehicle. Uh, and then we'll be ready to scan after that. Okay, so once we have the vehicle all targeted up, we're ready to start scanning. Now, the only problem is if we just start uh, scanning with all three scanners, there's no relationship to the scans. So we're gonna actually use these targets to do that. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna just use one of the scanners, and it doesn't matter which one, but we'll use the GoScan Spark. And we're gonna tell the software that we wanna acquire the targets only. So we're not gonna scan the surface. Um, so when you do this, it's extremely fast because it's not looking to capture the surface shape, which ha you know has millions of points when you're doing that. We're just gonna go around and find all the targets. So it can quickly acquire all the targets and then what we're gonna do is save that target file and then it's a, just a small text file and we're gonna share that with the other two scanners, basically load it on those computers and then tell those scanners to, when they go to start scanning to use that target file. So what that means is now all three scanners are using the same target file, which essentially means they're all using the same coordinate system. So then when we're done scanning, all of the scan data is gonna line up perfectly. Now, you could say, well, why don't you just, you know, take all three scanners and scan and have some overlap? And you can do that, but when you go to align those data sets, it's never gonna be perfect. Um, so what this allows us to do is have almost no overlap between each scanner, but yet have very accurate data sets that we'll show later in the software when we load them all together, all come in perfectly aligned. So it only takes a minute to go around and pre-acquire uh, the targets, save out a small text file that just contains their location, and then share them with each scanner. And next, after this, you'll see us actually all scanning with that same target file. Okay, so we're ready to do the 3D scanning with all three scanners. And we have shared that text file which contains the targets. So everybody has loaded up that target file in the VX element software. And that's the software that comes uh, with the scanners that's provided at no charge. And even though we have three different scanners here, you can see the software looks almost identical. Uh, when you load the software, you just tell it what scanner you're using. And then there's just some slight uh, interface differences uh, based on that scanner. So for example, the uh, GoScan Spark can also scan in color. So there's some settings in there for, for color and texture and so forth. But what we're doing here is each person is gonna do an area of the vehicle and they're gonna have just some slight overlap uh, in between each scan, um, just so that you know it's completely covered. And when we get done here, we'll actually load up the uh, the scans, uh, the individual scans into uh, into some software, and we, and we can look at it. Um, but uh, we're going to run a uh, clock that you see down here in the in the left corner, um, just so you can kind of see in real time uh, what's going on. But uh, while we have this time, let's go ahead and talk about each one of these scanners a little bit more. Um, on the right is the HandyScan 700. Now that is the oldest of these scanners that's been out for a while, but it's a great scanner. It's a red light laser scanner, and uh, it's at a great price point now. It comes in, in two models, the 307 and the 700. And depending on the configuration, it'll scan uh, 480,000 points per second at a pretty good uh, resolution and accuracy. Uh, it basically has about 11 by 10 scanning area. That's how much uh, kind of an area it picks up at any one time. And then in the middle, 
As we've mentioned, we have the uh, GoScan Spark. That's a fairly new scanner. That is a structured light scanner, and uh, it works a little different. It projects out 99 lines using an LE dot light versus a laser. And it also, as I mentioned, has cameras in it to capture color. Um, and it's got a really large scanning volume of 15 and a half by 15 and a half inches. So you can see how fast it, it can scan uh, compared to the, the other two scanners. So very, very uh, fast for scanning. Um, structured light scanners don't work as well on dark and shiny stuff, although it's getting better, but not as good as the laser-based systems. And then finally up front, we have the HandyScan Black Elite. Um, that's a newer model as well. That uses blue laser technology. Um, and that has a scanning area of about 12 and a half by 14 inches. So just slightly smaller than the, uh, than the GoScan. Um, that is the most accurate of these handheld scanners. And we call that uh, metrology grade um, because it, it uh, has really, really good accuracy. And you can see some of the tests we've done with that. And it also does really well on chrome and really shiny stuff. And that's why we're using that one on the front where we've got the large chrome grill. Now you can see uh, the, the uh, software window above for each scanner. Um, the one on the left, he has his view locked, where the one in the middle with the ghost scan, he has his moving around. These are just personal uh, choices as to you know what um, the way you like to use the scanner, but uh, you know either one works. But there it is; they're done in under four minutes. They've they've scanned this vehicle. So I had mentioned a uh, trick to removing the targets, and that is this small vacuum. And it's only used for this purpose, so there's no dirt or junk in it, but we just use this vacuum and suck off all of the targets, and then we just empty them out of the, uh, the container that uh, catches them. So it's a great way to just quickly remove all the targets, and uh, again, we can reuse these targets uh, many, many times. And then the other sticky ones, we're just uh, you know pulling those off using our fingernail. So that's a great way to quickly take off those magnetic targets. All right, so now let's go ahead and take a look at our scan data. Uh, we are using Geomagic Design X here, but you can use really any uh, CAD software that can import scan data or any reverse engineering software or inspection software. Uh, it really doesn't matter, but we're going to go ahead and import the scan data. And let's start with the uh, Go Scan data. And you can see what we have here. So you can see that looks pretty good. Now the real test will be when we import the other two. Uh, let's go ahead now and bring on the HandyScan black data. And you can see this is what we should expect to see. So we've got nice uh, aligned data, a little bit of overlap. We get some bleed through, which is good. That always uh, tells us that we've got a good alignment. So again, we've brought in the original or the uh, go scan and then the handy scan and you can see they perfectly line up. Let's go ahead and finally bring in the 700 data. And also it lines up and we get some nice bleed through. So just to kind of recap what we did is we set up those targets, we pre-scanned them, we loaded that into uh, each scanner and then started scanning. And now when we import that scan data, it all lines up perfectly. And we shouldn't do anything else with this. We shouldn't move this data at all because this is a very good alignment. And now all we have to do is merge them and we'll have one file. And then of course we can mirror it over if we want the other side and then continue on with whatever we're doing, whether this is reverse engineering or inspection. Um, we've got this scan data or maybe we're designing some you know, aftermarket parts to fit on this vehicle, whatever it is. We now have all of the scan data and we did it basically in four minutes. So this wraps up the video on using multiple 3D scanners at one time. And if you're trying to scan something large, this can really cut down on the scan time and still give you a, a model that's all aligned and of very good quality. Now, if you'd like to learn more about any of these scanners, again, there's the, the, uh, in the description below, there's some links to some very detailed demos. And there's also a link to a quick form you can fill out where you can contact us and we can talk to you and arrange either a web-based demo or an in-person demo of any of the technology we provide and see how it may help you. 
But again, wrapping up the video on using multiple scanners at one time.